The good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way, in verse 24, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Amen? Amen. So God sees us as more than conquerors through Christ. God sees each one of you as more than a conqueror. Romans 8, 37. You've got to see yourself as God sees you. Ready? Go. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. When we try to become a conqueror on our own strength, what happens? Nothing. What happened to the great Roman Empire? What happened to the great uh, uh, Greek Empire? What happened to the great Persian Empire? What happened to the mighty Russian Empire? Fell. Okay? And if America does not continue, does not follow the Lord, it's going to fall. Uh, I mean, so it's our job to do something about it. Not just say, oh, it's going to fall. No, what are we doing about it? Okay? So we have to do our own part in our own way. And everyone, uh, commissioners, does one vote matter? Does one vote matter? No. Of yeah. course it does. <laughs> every, every person has a so don't think that it doesn't matter what I do, I'm just a little person I just got my little job, it doesn't matter every person matters everything matters and so everyone matters in Jesus name amen, in the world it doesn't matter but in Jesus name everyone matters amen, amen. Romans 8 31 through 32 ready go what then shall we say to these things, if God is for us who can be against us? Now let's say, let's put it personal. Let it go. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for me, who can be against me? Verse 32. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him for me, how shall he not with him also freely give me some things? All things, man. So we just gotta believe this, be able to receive it, and according we're gonna according to our power to receive. That's a, the the power of God is gonna manifest itself in our lives. So we have a receiving problem, and we have to receive the first thing is God's grace, which is unmerited favor. We, he gives it to us because He wants to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So now it is always through God. And it's always because of Jesus, not because of us. Amen? So by grace we have been saved, and not by works. Ephesians chapter 2. That's all right. Ready? Go. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Verse 9. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. In verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen? So when we find, actually believe and accept this fact, this truth, we will start living our lives with God's power working through us and our old ways, our bad habits will start to fall away in Jesus' name, and we will start to make godly choices and godly decisions because of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So it's all about Jesus. Say it. It's all about Jesus. So we have to see ourselves as God sees us in Jesus' name. Matthew 13. Ready? Go. And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? Verse 11. He answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it has not been given. You is the believers, them is the world. Understand that? Verse 12. For whoever has to him, more will be given. And he will have what? Abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Verse 13. Therefore, I speak to them in parables, because seeing, they do not see. And hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand. 
How many of us have spoken to people and then you shut their ears and eyes in front of us? Even though they're looking at us, right? Like you talking about Christ, you can see, right? The, the pull away, or they don't want to leave me alone. Yes or no? All right? Verse 14. Wait, before we go, how many of that was us? Because I used to do it also, right? Before we knew the Lord, right? So, so don't look at them, oh, you guys are going to hell, because here we are. We didn't go to hell. Uh, there was still hope for us. Amen? So don't lose faith in them. Ready? Go. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing, you will hear and shall not understand. And seeing, you will see and not perceive. Verse 15. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing. And their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. Verse 16. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Verse 17. For surely I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see, and did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. So for today, uh, we're going to uh, close up with this story, and it's about David as a young 17-year-old boy. David versus Goliath, and as we said that, we are all giant killers uh, in Jesus' name. Now, what was the size of Goliath? Nine, Nine and a half feet, okay? So something people think that it's, a little story. It's not a story. This really happened. Okay? So a giant for us represents what? Uh, any problems that we are currently facing. So we need to face these problems, face, face our obstacles like David did in Jesus' name. So we got to study his strategy. At West Point, you know what they spent four years studying? Military strategy. Okay? They study for past military uh, battles, right? So they can learn from those battles. We as born-again believers, we have to study the Bible so we understand the, the, the strategies and then employ them into our lives. It's not automatic. It's not by prayer. It's by studying, receiving God's grace into our life and God's revelation knowledge into our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. So now, Isaiah, we're going to start. Isaiah, I'm sorry, 1 Samuel 17. And we're going to see certain points, certain scriptures. Ready? Let's all read. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle and were assembled at Soko, which belonged to Judah, and encamped between Soko and Asikah in Ephes Verse 2. Saul and the men of Israel were encamped in the valley of Allah and drew up in battle array against the Philistines. Now put yourselves in a battle situation, okay? Put yourselves here. Verse 3. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side with the valley in between them. Okay, we're in battle. We're getting ready. We're all soldiers in Christ. Verse 4. And a champion went out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Almost 10 feet, okay? So a big man, how would you like to be fighting that guy? <laughs> you little ladies, a giant, right? Right there, I'm almost a, a mini giant over here, a big guy, right? So what? He's like, come on, you in the name of Jesus. How many of us have seen a little five, you know, a four foot ten woman when somebody's going to mess with their kids or something, take off her slippers and attack her? She don't care nothing about the size of the other person, right? Uh, so... Uh, again, we have to see and why because she saw herself as a giant and she saw one of her uh, one, something that she loved to be threatened. We have to do the same thing when the devil threatens our marriages, when the, when the devil threatens our houses, when he threatens our children. We have to act as giants, not as little wimps. Amen? Amen. By faith, I am a giant. Say it. By faith, giant killer. Giant killer. In Jesus' name. Okay, verse. Uh, Give me verse 8. No, we have to skip because the story is too long. Let it go. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine 
and you, the servants of Saul, this is Goliath saying this, choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. So now, two armies against each other, right? And, and in those days, sometimes they would say, one champion, I, I challenge, uh, send me one guy. And so it's, everybody didn't have to fight, it was just that one champion against your champion, and whoever won, then everybody had to lay down, if your side lost, even though you didn't do nothing, and you were strong, you had to lay down and become a slave on the other side, all right? Not too good, right? Okay, verse uh, 9. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And now remember, this is the nine and a half foot guy, the bully, picking on, uh, on, on the other people. How many of us bullies, the devil, who's a bully trying to pick on us with his lies? Amen? So picture always the giant as a devil, uh, but he's a little wimp is what he is. Verse 10. Go ahead. In Jesus' name. Ready? Go. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Okay? So he's putting out a challenge. Now, who does Israel uh, belong to in those days? To God, right? Who, would fight, who was fighting their battles? So they should have had trust in who? In God. But now, these are God's people. They lose their sight of God and start looking at themselves. Happens to us in 2013. Battles come our way, and we are God's people. But we start forgetting about God and start looking at our problems, and that's why we lose those fights. Amen? But from now on, we're going to look at God, and we're going to seek learn, right? Yeah. Verse 11. David was the youngest. No, I'm sorry, you went to 14. Give me 11. I know I, I threw it a little bit off. Ready? Go. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. What about us? When we hear, when, when, when waiting for a job, they closed down the plant. Waiting for a legal decision, and it did not go your way. What happens now to all your work? You become afraid. You say, I don't know how God is going to do it, but I trust in you, God. Amen? I'm going to lift up our spirits here in Jesus' name. But here, Saul, who was Saul? He was the king. As the leader goes, what happens to the army? Then normally they go. So that's why we have to get strong leaders, and we have to plant strong leaders because if he, uh, you know, um, fades away, then the army is, is hurt. So when Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Verse 12. Now David was the son of that effort, right, of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, who had eight sons. And the man was old, advancing years in the days of Saul. Verse 13. The three oldest sons of Jesse's had gone to follow Saul to the battle. The names of these three sons who went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, next to him, Abinabad, and the third, Shammah. Okay, verse 14. Now here comes David onto the scene. David was the youngest, and the three oldest followed Saul. Verse 15. But David occasionally went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Verse 16. And the Philistine drew near and presented himself 40 days morning and evening. So Goliath would draw every time to the front. For 40 days, he's taunting you. The devil is taunting us. And he's not going to do it once. He's going to come at us and keep on pounding on us, pounding on us until we fight, fight back. So you got to understand that whatever giants we're facing, we got to stand up to the fight and push back in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen? Amen. Verse 17. Go. Then Jesse said to his son David, Take now for your brothers an ephah of this dry grain and these ten loaves and run to your brothers at the camp. Verse 18. And David left the supplies in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army, and came and greeted his brother. Hi, brothers. How you doing? Here's some food. Did he do anything wrong? But now, when you got, when you're different than your brothers, this is his natural brothers, right? You're going to see how envy comes in, and how they're going to try to smack you down when they're afraid of doing something, okay? So be careful with those closest to you. 
Verse 23, go. And all the land of Israel, when they saw them, wait a second, wait. Something happened now. We were on 22. Follow me as opposed to the, the paper. Ready? Go. Then as he talked with them, there was the champion, the Philistine of Brad, God, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines, and he spoke according to the same words. So David heard them. This is a little punk, 17-year-old kid, right? Or young man, he's 17 years old, and he heard this giant uh, talk against, uh, against Israel and against God. Look what happens, 24. All of the men of Israel, when they saw the men, what did they do? They fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. This is your army. How would you like your army if one guy comes out and your heart runs away from you and leads you in the middle of you? All right? So let's, okay, verse 25. Go. So the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches, will give him his daughter, and give his father's house exceptions from taxes in Israel. Okay, verse 26. Then David spoke to the man who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? So now David started to get some boldness in him. That's the Holy Spirit starting to come on you. You don't care who's against you. You say, man, greater is he that is in me than he that's against me in the world. Right? Verse 27. Put yourself in David now. Ready? Go. And the people answered him in this manner, saying, So shall it be done for the man who kills him. Goliath. Verse 28. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men. And Eliab's anger was aroused against David, and he said, Now, why was it Eliab's anger aroused against Goliath? 